Welcome to The Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzel Man Productions. Kind of like, okay, I'm just going to test these out. I, I've got several pairs that I that I have customized over the years. And um, so I took one pair. I was like, well, I got to go to the car wash. And so I took one pair. And I'm telling you, I had that that jet, you know, stream on. Oh, right on, yeah. Right on the shoes. I mean, I was, you know, just two inches away and the paint held up, you know, and so. Wow. Uh, so it was, a, it was a good test for me to see because there were, there were a pair that I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to redo them anyway. So if the paint strips off, then, you know, that that's good knowledge for me. But mm -hmm. also, you know, if it doesn't strip off, then that's, that's great knowledge for me as well. And so, right. Uh, but yeah, they, they held up really well. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me a custom sneaker artist, Stephen Cooks. Stephen, how's it going? Doing all right. Doing all right. Thanks for having me. Man, this is really cool. Uh, uh, I don't do sneakers justice. Um, I, and, I, and after finding out about you and what you do, and now I'm all about sneakers. Now I'm all oh. about wanting one tennis shoes what do you call them tennis shoes sneakers kicks? uh yeah i usually refer to my sneakers or i mean shoes some people are, are really die hard they're only sneakers and you can't call them anything else just they go on your feet whatever <laughs> <laughs> so you know you and i uh we belong to a group and uh you know i've known you for a while now and i didn't know that you designed these sneakers until Someone else told me uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was like, "Really?" And uh, so then, then your little deal on Channel Six came on, the, uh, talking about your business. And I was like, "Man, I got to have him on the Scott Townsend show. Need need to talk about this." So, thanks for being available during this uh, Christmas New Year's vacation. Absolutely, yeah. This is actually the best time for me, so it worked out well. So let's. You know, the, the, the business is Clean Kicks Custom, is that right? Yeah. And you're, uh, tell me a little bit about how you got started. Now, this is a very entre entrepreneurial story, I would imagine. So, yeah, man, how'd so you my, get? You know, it's just one of those, my, my dad, he, he was an entrepreneur. And so growing up, you know, I've been around small business and everything. And so it's kind of um, just something I'm used to. And so I kind of have that, that mindset about a lot. A lot of stuff and so um but i know it just kind of happened on accident really i um like to keep my shoes clean and so for christmas uh, i think it was like three years ago i asked for uh, a shoe cleaning kit for my wife and so she bought it from me but you know because i do like to keep my shoes more clean it wasn't that great of results and so uh or i mean it, you, it was great results but you didn't notice a big a huge difference and so um, she's a lot harder on her shoes than I am. And, um, you know, so I was like, well, let me clean your shoes. And the results were great, like phenomenal. And so, um, I remember Use, posting, using that kit that she got you. Correct. Yeah. On her okay. shoes. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I posted pictures on my, on my personal Facebook and said, you know, Hey, I'm starting this, this new hobby, um, of cleaning shoes. If anyone's interested, you know, let me know and you will do $20 um, to clean shoes. And then, um, you know, that's it. And uh, it took a few days and didn't didn't hear anything. And then finally, a friend um, from church gave me a shot or a, a shot and said, hey, I've got these these white shoes, bring them back to white. And so uh, it actually worked out really well. And um, since then, I, I think I did that for about a year. Um, but that company which is which first of all that's where clean kicks came from you know because i was only cleaning uh, shoes um but then that company that i bought their cleaning kit from they also have a customizer on staff and so um through watching some of their youtube videos and seeing like him clean up shoes and then paint them afterwards i you know just kind of watching i was like i could probably do some of that stuff and so um i ordered you know some of the same paint that they used and um, just kind of went for it. And so I started off, you know, some basic, basic colorways and eventually, you know, again, through just social media, got business and, and it's been rolling since then. So how do you practice, uh, you know, that's an expensive canvas, uh, tennis shoes. So how did you, did you practice on a piece of leather or a piece of whatever, or 
Well, I actually, so I had a pair of, um, of Jordan ones that I uh, had since, since high school. And so they weren't, you know, beat up, but I didn't wear them much anymore. And so I was like, well, I'll just give these ones a shot. And uh, it's funny, I've actually never finished my first pair of custom shoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because so I started painting those Jordan ones. And I mean, you know, with, with the first time you do anything, it takes forever, you know? Yeah. And, so it was taking a while. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just post some progress pictures. And so I posted a couple of progress pictures that I had done. And um, my mom actually was like, I didn't even know you're doing this here. I've got a pair that, you know, you can put, I think she had me do just like a little cross on. Um, and so I did that and, and I posted it. And after that, I've been having, you know, consistent business. And so I, uh, I did, <laughs> I've never finished my first pair actually. <laughs> So, wow. So you basically, they're, they're, they're no, I don't know where they ended up, but I think I was cleaning out the closet one day. I was like, all right, I'm not actually going to finish these. It's just so. so you basically learned, uh, uh, through YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I've always enjoyed art. Um, you know, I, I, I never really, I think the last art class I took was like in seventh grade, but I've always enjoyed, you know, just even different kinds of art. Um, and really appreciated it. And I, I think my mom is a little bit more artistic as well. So I kind of get that from her. Um, and so again, just, just even the challenge of learning something new, uh, but also it being artistic was, you know, it just kind of meshed really well for me. So, hmm. so this is kind of a, what, what really interests me. Um, and I mean, it's not about me. It's, uh, but I, one of the things, some of the, some of the, uh, marketing concepts that I think are working for you are concepts of scarcity, personalization, um, and individualization, individualized. Um, Horst Schultz, who uh, runs, uh, who started the Ritz Carlton, and now he's got another hotel chain that he does now, talks about. Um, what sets them apart and 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 makes them so exclusive is that not only do they provide the products and the services that their customers want, but they also do it in a with in a personalized way. Right. They try to te treat everybody how they want to be treated, not just a hotel guest. Right. But your prefer you know Stephen Cooks goes into a Ritz Carlton. They're going to know your preferences. And so when you go to another Ritz Carlton, they're going to be ready for you with the kind of bottled water you want and all that stuff, which I think is totally cool. Yeah. And then absolutely. you look, then you look at Starbucks. They've got over eighty thousand different co coffee combinations. So when you go in, you can get this coffee your way, and you know, chances are no one else is going to get it the way you get it. You know. Right. Right. Well, everybody wants individualization. Everybody wants. Uh, and they also want stuff that you can't get. So these tennis shoes, these sneakers that have these custom designs on them, it's, it just begs for word of mouth. People are like, well, where'd you get that? You know? And yeah. I'll, I'll shut up. I'm just... No, no, that's great. Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, it, I have it listed, you know, I think it's on my website, you know, it's uh world wearable art. And so, or wearable art for your feet. And so, um, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you, you see people paying, you know, crazy amounts of money for artwork that are, that's sitting on their walls. Um, but unless you go to their house, you can't see it, you know? And so right. that, that's, that's kind of one of those things where I'm like, I could do this and you could broadcast it for, you know, for a, a lot of people to see. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it, the, the other side of that is I've got to make them wearable. And so, um, you know, taking, taking time, you know, prep work, um, uh, all of that using the correct paint and, and all that helps helps it be wearable still stay you know stay intact and uh and be you know one of one custom um because even even when i'm doing a similar design um they're still slightly different you know it's a so, one-off yeah. yeah no yeah. no other and, shoes would be exactly the same as the other exactly you know and then that's the that's the great part about it um but you know as far as you know individualization goes um it's I, from my social media feed, there's a lot of customizers out there, you know, and, and so I see all sorts of stuff, but, mm -hmm. you know, from the, the average person, they, they don't know, you know, um, more than, yeah. you know, maximum. And so, um, 
you know, from, for me, I, I just have to know, I have to set myself apart for, from some other customizer. So whether that's, you know, really being meticulous on every single, you know, little line or whatever it is, um, you know, creating very clean, very uh, good work, um, or again, the durability part of it, you know, cause nobody's going to pay, you know, three to $500 or whatever, um, a shoe might come up to if it's gonna, you know, if the paint's gonna crack the first time they wear it or right. if it's gonna take it off. And so, um, that, that's kind of where I really invest a lot of time and energy into is making sure, you know, obviously the, the artistic side of it, but the prep work side of it to where that the shoes are good for many years, you know? It seems like you're doing a really good job kind of getting the word out. What's your marketing strategy like? Um, you know, social media is a great, a great resource. Uh, and that, that's mostly where um, all of the marketing, because I can reach people that I have no clue who they are, you know, and, for, mm. and usually for free, you know, and um, a lot of that I do depend on some of my other followers and them, you know, sharing my content or, uh, because, you know, it's Instagram is Instagram's where I normally operate off of, but I share from there to Facebook as well. Um, they have all their algorithms and all of that. And so, um, you know, the more comments and shares and stuff like that, that you get, the more they show it to your, all of your followers or other people as well. And so, um, you know, social media is a big part. I've, I've done the whole, like, you can promote it for $10 or whatever. And I haven't seen a ton of success from that. I've seen more just organic growth is better. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of where I've just been really, you know, really pushing out quality content, you know, and again, you know, that, that goes down to pictures, that's video, you know, content and, um, you know, just being personable with a lot of people uh, as well. But, you know, ultimately, and it's kind of like you said, word of mouth uh, for a small business, I think personally is, is the best billboard you can have. Um, yeah, I totally you know, agree people, people telling other people, I mean, that's, that's the whole reason how, like you said, you even, you know, found out about my business was just that's why we're out. here. Yeah, exactly. So, um, personally, I think that's the best, you know, and, and, you know, the, every now and then like the, one of the biggest, um, marketing things that I did was, um, I created a, a pair for uh, the Christian rapper, Andy Mayo, and, um, just kind of took a shot in the dark and, and I, yeah, I mean, I contacted him first and found out his shoe size and all that. And thankfully, you know, I got in contact with him because of that social media um, presence. But um, and then, you know, I, I created a pair of shoes for him. And, you know, it's like I gave up, you know, the, the custom fee and the price of the shoe. But I also got, you know, 15 to 20 orders just off of that one post. And so, really, you know, so it's, it's kind of a give and take sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't I don't do free work often, but again, it, it, it's a business. And so sometimes you have to give, give up a little mm -hmm. to get back, So influence. So I was going to ask you about influencer marketing. And if you have mm -hmm. tried any of that, sounds like you have, um, is yeah, there anybody that's, that's else that I really want to push for, um, in 2022 is to, to work with some bigger names. Um, you know, uh, there's another customizer that I follow that he, uh, you know, he, he puts out a ton of content. Um, but he was just saying, you know, DMing or messaging some of these people is just the worst they can say is no, or they don't read it. But at the end of the day, you got to put yourself out there and, and have other people give the other people the opportunity to use you. Um, and so that's kind of one thing I want to push for um, this next year is, is just getting in, whether that's professional locker rooms or, you know, again, on stages, those kinds of things um, in front of a lot more people, because that is a billboard, you know, format. Right. Business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Any other, uh, so any other big names you've worked with, or you said you had the, the Christian artist, what was his name again? Andy Minio. Yeah. Andy Minio. Yeah. No, I, um, I was approached probably maybe October um, about, you know, the, the custom motorcycle uh, for Sha Shaq. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal and so um, what what happened the owner of uh, Boom Moto he it's an electric uh, motorcycle company here in Bartlesville uh, Jeff Holly is his name and he you know I've known Jeff for years just through playing basketball and coaching and all that and um, he I guess was at some sort of trade show in Las Vegas and um, somehow ran into Shaq's manager and 
you know, I was just talking to him about his company and said, Hey, we'd love, you know, we'd love an investment and, and to bring him on board um, with us. And so that was kind of a, from my understanding that that was the gift of saying like, Hey, let's, let's get this rolling. And, and this is kind of what we can offer that this is the services we can do. Um, and so he said, Hey, you know, I want you to paint a bike that represents, you know, Shaq's time at in Los Angeles and his time in college at LSU. And so, um, you know, just coming up with that design, I, you know, painted one half of it, um, for, like I said, for LSU and I put the logo and all that and different textures. Um, and of course his number and, and the logo. And, uh, then the other side again was, it was the same concept, but just opposite colors. Um, and, and so that was, that was a cool experience for sure. Um, definitely very different from shoes. Um, uh, some ways are similar, some ways are very different. So, um, that was, that was great to do. And so I think from what we've talked about, we'll be, I'll be doing some more, uh, motorcycle stuff as well. Um, just paying hmm. jobs. That, so motorcycle. So that must be nerve wracking. You're working on a <laughs> 28, what, how much, you know, however, much I'm not even sure how much they sell for. I know they, they are, um, actually pretty, pretty affordable. Um, but still, yeah, it was just, it was just the whole, again, working on it with a completely different surface that I'm not used to, uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, leather, although obviously the paint sits on top, it absorbs into the leather. And so it holds on really well. Um, I had a little mishap with the LSU side of the motorcycle and I painted it and I, I had laid down my tape to do a little stencil on top. And I took that tape off the LSU logo came off as well, but it was back oh, to the man. And so I had to go get different paint and, and it was just kind of a learning process, you know? And so mm -hmm. uh, it added an, an extra couple days to, to the delivery date because, you know, I just had to start all over, you know, scratch it back down and uh, sand it down and restart this. Thank you for joining the Scott Townsend show. We'll be back right after this. Hey, this is Scott, and we have a new way of allowing listeners to sponsor, to help with the production of this podcast. We're going to start using buymeacoffee.com. If you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend, you can make a donation. It takes a lot of work to put these podcasts together, so um, if you want to help us out, keep this going, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend. And now back to the program. Okay. I'm sold. I want a uh, custom set of sneakers. So how does, how does this work? Walk me through the process. Yeah. The whole process uh, is, you know, usually, again, I usually I do most of my transactions through Instagram because that's just where most of my business will come from. Um, obviously, again, Facebook and I've got um, a website, which it's it's funny. The website doesn't actually have a whole lot of sales, but I feel like the website is a validity thing. So, you know, it's you go and you, you know, you ch you see me on Instagram or whatever. And again, the it's taking steps toward the professionalism part of it. And so um, although, you know, most of my most of my sales are from Instagram, you know, them being able to see, oh, this guy has a legitimate website. Um, you know, it, it, it provides that extra, again, validity and trust in what they're purchasing. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, and so after, you know, you know, contacting me, whether again, through email, whatever, um, I, depending on, you know, kind of what my upcoming list looks like, I'll, I'll let you know, kind of a ballpark estimate, usually four to six weeks ish. Um, you know, at times it's been pushed out a little bit further. Um, and so usually what I'll have people do is they'll send me the shoe that they're, they're wanting done. Um, and I, oftentimes they'll order it online and just put my address in the shipping information portion, right. but, you know, you know uh, ship directly to me. And then, um, that's kind of their, their collateral for, for the shoe. If, if they end up backing out, then the, the, they just lose the shoe basically, mm -hmm. uh, kind of basically and um and, but then i'm in contact you know before i start we finalize 
the design and everything, um, you know, depend, again, depending on what they're wanting, I'll, I'll shoot them a, in an estimate price. And um, from start to finish on the shoes themselves, um, anywhere from, I think probably my, my fastest has probably been like four hours, but I would say probably my average, it, a, a quick pair of average shoes is about six hours. Um, and then, you know, anywhere to 12 hours is, is probably normal. Um, but again, I've had shoes that take me 30 to 40 hours, depending on, again, de detail, intricacies, those kinds of things. And so, um, and then again, I'll, I'll take pictures, send the, send the customer pictures before, make sure we're all good and then ship them back out. So all in all, usually, like I said, usually about four to six weeks, um, depending on upcoming lists. So, yeah, you should not that I would know, but you should probably stretch out your, your wait time to like eight, 10 weeks, you know, just make people really yeah. anxious. To get yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's times it's been, you know, about three months, almost 12 weeks sometimes. And then at that point, usually I'll stop taking orders and I'll, uh, you know, and I, so I actually just, uh, yesterday reopened up orders. Um, cause oh, I had, really? um, yeah, just, it was one of those, I, I think I stopped taking, um, orders in like September. Oh and I gosh. just now finished, um, you know, some of those orders that they ordered, you know, and so, you know, it get, again, it gets to the point where it's like, all right, I've got people's money or whatever, and I'm holding it for three or four months. Like, I just don't feel comfortable doing that, you know, all the time. And so right. I'll, I'll get down to where I've got about five or six orders and then I'll reopen up again uh, for orders. So, huh. the, so, and so <clears throat> I want to design. So how do I tell you the design? I mean, are we going to share emails back and forth with, do I give you a pencil sketch or, you know, what? You know, I've, I've taken just about everything. Um, I prefer to do things over, you know, like texting or messaging is so whether again, whether it's social media or email, so that way I have something to refer back to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I've done several FaceTime videos and I'll either write notes down or whatever, but I'll also have them kind of, message me and, and describe because again sometimes that wait is three months long and i'm not always going to remember you know exactly what they're wanting right. um, oftentimes though they'll message me and say hey i have this idea i want star wars themed or whatever and they just kind of let me run with it you know they, they if they have a main character or something that they're wanting you know spotlighted then they'll they'll send me that um you know oftentimes i'll ask if they have any reference images that they're again wanting for sure to be included in it Mm -hmm. And then I'll just kind of let creativity take over and, you know, design it. You know, most of the time, most of the time people don't even ask for a, you know, a, a proof or anything. They like, we trust your, your creativity, you know, just make sure that like for the star Wars theme, like Darth Vader is, you know, front and center. And so, um, so those, those are the best ones where they're not too, um, demanding where it has to be a certain way because then i feel like my creativity is in a box and i can't really go outside of that box mm -hmm. but also there's there's people who are like eh, i don't care just do whatever you know and then, then that's <laughs> kind of hard as well because i'm like i don't know yeah. what you like but you know, right so um you know people really giving me freedom within some sort of limitation is mm -hmm. right. for sure no, i totally agree if they if they say you know sky's the limit do whatever you want what does that mean? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or even I had I had a girl and they actually they turned out great. Um, but she was saying like, just do an outdoor steam. And I was like, what does that mean? You know, there's several different, you know, and so um, you know, I, I definitely toiled with that one for a while, but um they ended up they ended up turning out good and she loved them. So it was great. So once you and I so once you and I uh uh work out the artwork for the shoes then like you said, it's going to take about four to six weeks as far as I understand. And then yeah. we'll ship them back. And I mean, I would be so scared to wear these things like in rain or yeah. on a, a wet sidewalk or something. What's the durability like with these? As far as, you know, wearing them in the rain, mud, anything like that. I mean, they hold up. I, I actually, I have a video I haven't posted yet. Um, but I, one day I was kind of like, okay, I'm just going to test these out. I I've got several pairs that I, that I have customized over the years. And, um, so I took one pair, I was like, well, I gotta, gotta go to the car wash. And so I took one pair and I'm telling you, I had that 
that jet you know stream on oh right yeah on, right on the shoes i mean i was you know just two inches away and the paint held up you know and so wow uh, so it was a, it was a good test for me to see because there were there were a pair that i was thinking like okay i'm gonna redo them anyway so if the paint strips off then you know that that's good knowledge for me but mm -hmm. also you know, if it doesn't strip off and that's that's great knowledge for me as well and so right uh, but yeah they they held up really well and so uh you know, the, the durability part of them is great. And like I said, the sealer that I use is a scratch protector as well. And so as long as you're not just out, you know, kicking rocks and, or, you know, purposefully, you know, trying to, to scratch them up, then they, they hold up really well. Last couple of questions. I know my time's uh, winding down here. What's your favorite project that you've done my so far? project uh i think would probably be the the space jam um jordan nines that i that i painted about a thought before i would have grabbed them they're up, up in the room but uh they you know space jam's just always been my favorite movie since you know re released in 1996 and and uh and so that, that was kind of a special deal and even since i started painting i i had a little um postcard on my on my shelf over there that you know i had different shoes that I wanted to do and space jam shoes were, was on the list for probably two years and it just wasn't ever the right time. You know, I had orders I was trying to, and eventually I was like, okay, I've got to make time to do this. And so actually I created quite a bit of content, uh, around that, you know, videos and, and, you know, even, I even created like a little promo type deal for it, uh, just because I was so, so excited for it. And, um, and so they, they turned out, they turned out pretty good. And so I was, I was really pleased with, with those and those are a personal pair that i just ended up ended up keeping for sure uh what is it about space jam is it michael jordan or bugs bunny or what yeah that's michael jordan he's he's the greatest uh in my opinion and again just you know growing up in in the 90s and mm -hmm. you know, him being such a a an icon you know even even to a little kid i was born in 93 and so you know, I was very young through the nineties and, you know, I knew who he was and I, you know, watched him play and all of those things. Um, and so, you know, the, the Jordan 11s that he wears in the, in the movie, those are my favorite shoes, you know, of, of all time. Um, and so it just kind of, it just clicked with me. And so I, I remember anytime we'd go to the video store, uh, that was what I, that was what I read it. And, which I don't know why my parents didn't buy it. <laughs> I'm sure they spent two or three or four times more. Than yeah. They were. But, um, but yeah, um, that, that was my movie for sure. What's the hardest project you've done um, so far? I, I referenced it earlier. The, the one where she said outdoor. Um, so the, mm. the main theme was her dog and, um, you know, she wanted fairly realistic uh, images of her dog on the sides of the shoes and then um, she wanted me to um, remove the swoosh. And so, you know, cut out all the stitching and all that. And then put the swoosh on a different area and then basically paint her dog around it like it had the, it's, the swoosh in its mouth. Um, wow. It's a great idea. It was, it was I mean, the, like I said, it was great. It was, and she was great to work with. Um, but the, like I said, the realism of the dogs and then the, um, the vagueness of the, outdoor theme was it, it definitely stretched me for sure um yeah. because a lot, of, a lot of what i do is either logos or um different stuff like that and so you know actually having to paint and blend and do all these different things that you know i've never really had any sort of you know professional or training or in you know, technical training anything like that um it was it was definitely a challenge but you know i, I think that's kind of part of being an artist, you know, being challenged and, mm -hmm. and enjoying it. You know, I, I loved every second of painting it. And so, um, the, but yeah, they were definitely, definitely the hardest ones I've done for sure. Well, Steve, I really appreciate your time and thanks for, I was going to say dropping in, but yeah, stopping <laughs> by and visiting with us about uh, clean kicks. It's super cool. Um, send me some pictures and I'll put those up too. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. If anybody wants more information about you or ordering, mainly ordering shoes, um, hopefully this podcast will generate a lot of orders. So everybody out there listening, watching, you need to get a pair of shoes from Steven. So how do, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, my two main ways are through email at 
clean kicks customs dot or sorry clean kicks customs at gmail uh, dot com and uh, or just through instagram you know my my handle is clean kicks customs and those are the two main main ways and uh, you know like i said i'd love everybody hearing it ordered an order pair for sure heck yeah i'll have to I'll have to order myself a pair too. And that seems like that would make a really cool birthday present or Christmas yeah. present. Of course, we just got through Christmas and all, but you know, if you want to get your kids or something, that's something that no one else will have, you know, and, right. and the kids love or everybody loves sneakers. So yeah, it's a win -win. probably the majority <laughs> of my orders are for other people, um, as gifts, you know, I, oh, some yeah. of the ones that are most special is the wedding shoes, you know, just because it's such a big day, you know, and so when when you know husband and wife order matching shoes or whatever, and oh, that's you know, funny. Yeah, me me being able to be a part of that is, is always is, is really cool. I think I've done maybe three pairs of, of wedding shoes. So yeah, that's cool. All right, Steve. Well, uh, anything else you want to tell the listening audience before we knock out of here? Uh, no, I think we covered just about everything. Cool. Well, for Stephen Cooks, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching, listening to the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Scott.